In this video, we're going to navigate the world of scroll sections inside of Framer and how we can use them to automatically navigate to certain sections on our website or even build this button where we can click it and it takes us back to the top of the page. Let's go. Okay, so here we are inside a Framer project and we have this one page website. It's pretty basic. We've got this video here. We've got a bit of a features section, a benefits section down below here. And we've also got a contact form here as well. And because this is a one page site, what I will actually want to do is make it so my navigation, when I click on it, will automatically jump to that section of the website. So what we're actually gonna do is go ahead and utilize some scroll sections inside of Framer. So if I click on any frame on the canvas and go to my properties panel on the right hand side, down the bottom, you'll notice we have this thing called a scroll section. And this is essentially something we will use to identify uh, the section of the page later on when we want to link it inside the navigation. So if we click on plus here, we can set the name of our scroll section. So we'll just call it what it is, which will be the video. Now we can have the ability here to offset something by the Y axis. So when I scroll to this section, if I want it to be offset, so it will appear a little bit higher or uh, below the actual section itself, then we could set the pixels here. So if I set it to be 20 pixels, it means it's going to be offset by 20 pixels when I scroll to it. So we have a, a trailer section. We've also got the features section here. Now, even though we can kind of select any element on the canvas and set it as a scroll section, it's usually best practice to kind of select the parent frame, the kind of overarching frame that's containing all that. Like, yes, you could set this as the scroll section because this is the start of that section. But my recommendation is just to kind of select the whole section just so you don't struggle to find it later on. And it's a little bit cleaner in terms of how you'd build. So let's set this to be called features. We've got this section here, which we'll call benefits. And we've got the contact form down below as well. Okay, fantastic. Now what we need to do is actually link up our links in the navigation. So I've got this set up as a component and we just need to make this a link and I'll just set this as a variable for now. Okay, fantastic. So now I can go in and I can press on link and what's important here is I select the page that I'm on and then you'll notice this new section appear here called section. And this is where it will show us all the sections that we have created. So for trailer, we're gonna link that to be the video. On features, we'll set that to the home page, and then under the section features. Same with benefits. And contact, just like so. Okay, great. So now if we preview our sites, and say if we click on features, you'll notice it'll take us to the features section. So click on benefits, it's gonna take us there, the contact section or the trailer, it's just gonna jump us around the page. But you notice it's not really a smooth scrolling of a transition, it doesn't, it just jumps, it doesn't really scroll for us. So to change this, all we need to do is just make sure that when we set up our link, it's set to a smooth scroll instead of an instant scroll. So now, if I preview that again, if I click, if I click on say benefits, you notice it will automatically scroll me down to that section of the page. Now we can use this same logic to create a button, say at the end of my page to take me right back to the top. So let's put something here underneath our contacts form just for now. So we'll drag that underneath and let's add some text in here. And let's say, take me to the top. And let's size this down to match our styling a little bit more and we'll change the letter spacing just like so. And we'll turn layout on so everything gets stuck to the middle. And I'll set the width and height to be auto so it just kind of fills the content because I want it to be dictated by the size of the padding. So let's just set it to be 15. And let's add a radius on this as well. And maybe we change the color so it kind of feels a little bit more like my website. And let's add an icon from the hero library pack. And we want an arrow facing up. So let's see if we can find something here. Long up, beautiful. 
Let's change this to black and let's change the direction of this layout as well. Okay, great. And maybe we actually want this to be fixed to our website the entire time. So even if I'm halfway down, then I can still kind of scroll back to the top. So underneath my desktop breakpoint, we're just gonna paste this in and let's set this to be fixed. So it's always kind of stuck. And we'll set this to be at the bottom right of my page, but we'll change the positioning. So it's gonna be 20 pixels from the bottom and then 20 pixels from the right. And then we can set up our link. Uh, so I don't actually have a scroll section set up for the hero. So if I kind of click on this hero section, go down to scroll section and let's call this hero. Now, when I actually go ahead and try to create my link for my button, we can use the section hero. Okay, and we'll set that to smooth. So now when I preview this, I can scroll down my website and there's this button here, which says, take me to the top. And then whenever I need to jump back to the top, I can just click it and it takes me right back to the top. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want more Framer content like this, consider subscribing to the channel because we put out new Framer tutorials every single week. And if you're ready to level up and master Framer, check out my Ultimate Framer Masterclass. It's just my brand new course on mastering Framer from A to Z with over 70 lessons. But until next time, I'll catch you later.